Hello and welcome to this episode of RPG Gamer Top 5s and this time we're going to do the top RPGs on the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn was a 32-bit 5th generation video game console developed by Sega and released on November 22nd, 1994. Despite the launch of the Saturn and Sony PlayStation, sales of 16-bit games and consoles continued to account for 64% of the video game market into 1995. Sega underestimated the continued popularity of the Genesis and did not have the inventory to meet demand. However, in part due to an aggressive price war, the PlayStation outsold the Saturn by 2 to 1 in 1996, while Sega's 16-bit sales declined markedly. By the end of 1996, the PlayStation had sold 2.9 million units in the United States, more than twice the 1.2 million Saturn units sold. As of August 1997, Sony controlled 47% of the console market, Nintendo 40%, and Sega dropped to only 12%. Neither price cuts nor high-profile game releases proved helpful in bolstering the sales of the console. This led to a deteriorating financial situation for Sega, and shortly before announcing its financial losses, Sega announced that it was discontinuing the Saturn in North America to prepare for the launch of its successor. The decision to abandon the Saturn effectively left the Western market without Sega games for over one year until the Dreamcast was released on November 27, 1998. The Saturn featured a total of eight processors. The main central processing units are two Hitachi SH2 microprocessors clocked at 28.6 MHz and capable of 56 million instructions per second. The system contains an economy version of the Motorola 68000 processor running at 11.3 MHz as a sound controller, a cut-down version of the processor used in the Commodore Amiga, Atari ST and the Saturn's predecessor, the Mega Drive. It also featured a custom sound processor with an integrated Yamaha FH1 DSP running at 22.6 MHz, capable of up to 32 sound channels with both FM synthesis and 16-bit sampling at a maximum rate of 44.1 kHz, and two video display processors. The Saturn contains a cartridge slot for memory expansion, but games are loaded from compact discs inserted into the Saturn's double-speed drive. The Saturn's video output displays at resolutions from 320 by 224 pixels to 704 by 224 pixels. Developers describe the Saturn as a real coder's machine for those who love to get their teeth into assembly and really hack the hardware, with more flexibility and more calculating power than the PlayStation. But it was also remarked that compared to the PlayStation, the Saturn was remarkably worse at generating polygons, which were really coming into their own in video gaming at the time. With lifetime sales of 9.26 million units, the Saturn is considered a commercial failure. Although damage caused to Sega's reputation by poorly supported add-ons for the Genesis is considered a major factor in allowing Sony to gain a dominance in the market for the PlayStation. But enough with the history lesson and on with the countdown. And number 5, Shining the Holy Ark by Sega in 1996. Shining the Holy Ark is part of Sega's Shining series of video games and marked a new direction for the series, utilizing polygons as well as sprites for the visuals and a story targeted more specifically towards an adult audience. It introduced the saga of the Vandals and the Innovators, abandoning the saga of the Devil Kings which was followed by the previous installments of the series. In contrast to the action-adventure format of the first Shining game on the Saturn, Shining Wisdom, Shining the Holy Ark revived older RPG elements such as extensive first-person dungeon crawling and turn-based combat. It had greater critical success than its predecessor, with praise going to its unique graphical style and engaging battles. Gameplay is most similar to Shining in the Darkness. The player explores towns and dungeons in the first-person view, with battles almost exclusive taking place in dungeons. Exploration uses traditional node-based movement rather than the continuous freeform movement used in most first-person games at the time. The player controls a party of up to four characters, but additional characters can be kept in reserve and called upon mid-battle if needed. Battles take place at random are in a turn-based format, maintaining the first-person view but also allowing the player to view allies as they take their actions. At number 4, Panzer Dragoon Saga by Sega in 1998. Panzer Dragoon Saga departs from the linear rail shooter gameplay of the earlier Panzer Dragoon series, introducing traditional RPG elements such as random encounters, semi-turn-based battles, and free-roaming exploration. 
The player controls Edge, a young mercenary who rides a powerful dragon and encounters a mysterious girl from a vanished civilization. The game starts with Edge, a mercenary hired by the Empire, guarding an excavation site filled with artifacts from the Ancient Age, a vanished advanced civilization. Fending off an ancient monster, he discovers a girl buried in a wall. The site is attacked by the mutinous Black Feet, who seize the girl, kill Edge's companions, and shoot Edge. Edge survives, escapes with the help of a mysterious flying dragon, and swears revenge on the Black Fleet leader, Craymon. The player controls Edge during gameplay, which is divided into three modes. Traversing large areas on the dragon, battling enemies, and exploring on foot. Saga simplifies many RPG conventions. For example, it has few travel sequences and side quests, requires little maintenance work such as managing inventories or skill trees, and features only Edge and his dragon, rather than a party of playable characters. It can be completed in less than 20 hours, making it much shorter than most RPGs of the time. Panzer Dragoon Saga is one of the most critically acclaimed Saturn games, and is often listed as one of the greatest games of all time. It earned particular praise for its story, graphics and combat. However, the game suffered from a limited release in the West as Sega had shifted focus to its Dreamcast console, and worldwide sales were poor. And number 3, Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldin, by Sunsoft Working Designs in 1996. Legend of Eldin is the first Albert Odyssey title to be released in English, as well as the first to feature traditional turn-based role-playing elements, as opposed to tactical strategy-based gameplay. It was created as a Gaiden, or side story to the original titles, and contains backstory characters and plot that are independent from earlier games in the series. The game follows the adventures of Pike, a teenage boy whose family was murdered by a horde of monsters while he was still an infant, and he is raised by a family of winged humanoids known as Harpies. Ten years later, his adoptive sister is turned to stone by an evil mage. Together with Cirrus, a talking sword housing the spirit of one of the legendary Eldian siblings, Pike travels the world in search for a cure, and discovers a plot by a group of evil magicians to turn the world's races against one another, and revive the ancient god Vlag. Together with the help of friends he meets along his journey, Pike must prevent the evil's resurrection. Albert Odyssey Legend of Eldin is a traditional RPG with overhead perspective and combat based around the selecting of character actions from menus. At number 2, Shining Force 3 by Sega in 1997. Shining Force 3 is a continuation of the Shining series, comprising three separate but overlapping storylines. The Japanese version of Shining Force 3 was released in three volumes. For players who collected all three volumes, Camelot Soft also issued a premium disc featuring artwork, a character model viewer, and additional extras. In North America and Europe, only Scenario 1 was released. The real ending to the game can only be viewed by completing all the games in the series. Scenario 1, God Warrior of the Kingdom, features Symbios, a young lord from the Republic of Aspina. As the game begins, Symbios is part of a military force representing Aspina at a peace conference in the neutral city of Saraband. Scenario 2 Target, Child of God, features Midion, Prince of Destona, and youngest of three sons of Emperor Demorek. Although loyal to his father and his country, he senses there are other forces at work beneath the tensions between Aspina and Destonia. He attends the conference in Saraband on behalf of Destonia, along with his brothers, Aront, and Majoron. And Scenario 3, Bulls on Rising, stars Julian, a mercenary who appears as a secondary character in both Scenario 1 and Scenario 2. He is, for all intents and purposes, the true main character of Shining Force 3. His initial motivation as the story begins is to track down and kill Garm, one of, if not the, most powerful member of the Vandals, a powerful race of beings that existed for over a thousand years. Julian believes that Garm killed his father and is seeking revenge. Like earlier Force games in the Shining series, Shining Force 3 is a turn-based tactical role-playing game. Battles take place in square grids, and each unit occupies one square. Each unit can move up to a fixed amount of squares along the battlefield, determined by its move statistic. Depending on its location relative to enemies and allies, a unit can also perform one action, attack, cast a spell, use an item, or search the area. Some commands, such as equipping or dropping items, do not count as actions. As is typical for an RPG, units become stronger by fighting enemies, or by performing other actions in battle, such as healing allies. These actions give the units experience points, which allow them to gain levels. 
And at number one, Dragon Force by Sega in 1996. Dragon Force was created in Japan and translated for North American release by Working Designs in 1996, a translation that was also used by Sega in Europe under license from Working Designs. The game's main selling point was that battles involve up to 200 soldiers fighting on screen in real time, causing them to be often likened to battle scenes in the then recent film Braveheart. Dragon Force is set in the world of Legendra, which lived in an era of prosperity under the watch of the benevolent goddess Astia until it came under siege by the evil god Madruk and his armies. The star dragon Hasgalt and his chosen warriors, the Dragon Force, came to stop him, but personal disputes amongst the Dragon Force led to their downfall and left Hasgalt to face Madruk in a fight to the death. Hasgalt, unable to kill Madruk, sealed him away until eight new chosen warriors could rise to permanently defeat him. The player assumes the role of one of eight rulers vying for control of Legendra. Each ruler has a set of generals under their command, and each general commands an army of up to 100 soldiers. Armies travel between towns and castles via fixed routes on an overhead scrolling map, much like the earlier Saturn game, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Wall of Fire. When armies of different nations meet, they engage in battle. During battle, the player can select commands or special attacks from a menu. Each individual skirmish ends when one general runs out of hit points or retreats. If both generals' armies are depleted, both generals are then given one last chance to retreat before they are thrust into a one-on-one -on -one battle. Generals who run out of hit points are, depending on the general, captured, injured, or rarely killed in action. If the player's ruler is defeated in this manner, the player loses the game and must restart from his last save. Every in-game week, a fixed amount of time on the world map, the player attends to administrative duties. During this time, Players may give awards to generals, increasing the number of troops they can command, or items that increase their capabilities, persuade captive enemy generals to join their army, search for items, recruit generals in the ruler's territory, fortify castles, and save the game. Plot advancing cutscenes frequently take place at the end of the week. Well, that's it for our top 5 RPGs on the Sega Saturn. So what did you think? Did you have one of these blinking your mystic consoles during its all too short 4 year lifespan? Or did you miss it like we did before it was replaced by the Dreamcast? Let us know in the comments below or by getting in touch through email or the website. So as always, many thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what we're doing, but most of all, you look after yourselves. And we'll catch you later. Bye!